Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing my third alternative using the June 2020 paper pumpkin kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past couple days, I have been sharing some alternatives using the June 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. On screen now, you'll see the clear cards I made on the first day, and then the quick and easy slimline card I shared yesterday. If you would like to check out either of these videos, I do have those linked in the description box below. Before I get started on the process, I thought I would share with you most of the products that I'll be using today. If I do add anything later, I'll be sure to let you know in the voiceover. If I do leave you with any questions though, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. So from the kit, I will be using the Sending, Sunshine, and the Little Sun stamp. Now I have already put my stamps into the envelopes that I store them in. If you want to know more about my storage, I have that video linked in the description box below as well. Other items from the kit are the black and white polka dotted tag. And then I will be using this piece, which is a scrap. I will actually be using this sun outline. For my card base, I'll be using the sunburst card that came in the kit. And I'll be using the black stampin' spot. Now because I will be stamping some where the gold foil is, I did go ahead and get out my stays on jet black ink pad just to make sure that that doesn't rub off later. I also grabbed this paper punch from my stash. I think it's probably about a one and three quarter inch circle. I'll be using the Hero Arts Infinity dies again. I shared these with you in my clear card video. I just love the clean, crisp cut these make, and they're nice and concentric. They go right in order. I also got out a top fold white card base and a piece of black card stock. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna start my card out today by doing the die cutting. I chose the second from the largest die from the set for the black piece of cardstock, and then for my sunburst card, I chose the next size down, or number three in the set. To hold my dies in place, I am using pieces of the Scotch Blue Removable Tape. I showed this to you on my clear card videos, I believe, but these are actually the same pieces that I used in that video and that were actually used before. This tape is amazing. It holds the dies where you need it to, and it can be reused over and over again without ruining the front or tearing any of the pattern paper part. If you want to check this product out, I do have a link to Amazon in my description box below, but I have seen it at Michael's before, and then it's usually at places like Office Depot or Office Max, like office supply stores. And now it's time to put what some people might consider trash or recycling to use. Whenever Stampin' Up! sends the die cuts with the kits where the image or the color bleeds out further than where the actual piece is punched out at, I usually try to use that in some way on alternatives. I think it's a great way to add color and just a little something extra to the card. The next step in the process for me was to get out my Misty and stamp the sunburst image. I did decide to go ahead and get out my Misty instead of using my Stampin' Pad, which you'll see here in just a little bit, because this stays on ink. I don't know if it's just my ink pad, but it's not very juicy. So I wanted to ensure that if I had to stamp this multiple times, that it would land in the place that I needed it to. And sure enough, you'll see here, I had to stamp it about three times to get it dark enough to be visible. Now you will see that each time it kind of comes up off the Misty, but because because when I was placing my card into the Misty, I had it down in the lower right corner. I can just replace 
that each time and know that that is in the place that I wanted it to be in. Normally though, you wouldn't want your paper moving if you were using a Misti. I was a little leery about buying the Misti originally because of the price, but I have to tell you that it is probably worth every cent that I paid for it. Because my next piece is so small to stamp on and there's no room for the magnet and not a really good way to ensure it would stay in like a corner of the Misty, I did go ahead and get out my Sizzix Stampin' Pad. This is great for clear stamps because it adds that little bit of cushion you need underneath so you get a nice clear impression. You might notice that my sentiment is a little to the left of that tag, and that is on purpose for when I place it later, I'll be cutting a little bit off of the right edge. The next thing I did was get out my paper punch and I aligned it so that it was just sitting right around the edge of that sunburst stamped part. And I have to say it was almost like that punch was made for that sunburst. Once that was punched out, I added adhesive to the back of the sunburst negative part or the part that didn't get punched out, and I centered that on my black cardstock to mat it. Once that was in place, I got out my art glitter glue with the fine tip and I added glue to the back of my sunburst piece. Now when I add art glitter glue, I usually try to put little dots and then I try to spread them out with the metal part or the tip on the glue bottle. Once I had all of the glue on there, I centered it around the sunburst opening on the card front and I set that aside to dry for about five minutes. I also made sure that I put back in my glue stopper because you definitely do not want to leave that out of your art glitter glue. Once the sunburst outline was dry and ready to go, I placed adhesive on the back of the matted piece and centered that onto the front of my card base. Next, for some added dimension, I got out some dimensionals that I have in my stash. I did not use the mini ones that come with this kit just because I had leftovers from previous kits and I like to save those little ones for when I really need them. This got placed into the opening on the card front and I tried to make sure to line up all of the rays. Next, I pulled out the sheet of black and white labels that came with the kit and I chose one of the skinny ones for this card. Before I placed it down, I added a fishtail in one end of this. The reason I didn't add it on the other side is because that's going to hang off. At this point, I still didn't know the exact layout of the last two pieces, so I kind of played around with the layout and I temporarily just kind of placed that black and white polka dotted label there until I knew that was where I wanted it to go. After I cut off the overhang, I added some dimensionals to the back of the sentiment. And for this, I actually used the edge of the dimensional sheet. That's the great thing about these. If you need a line or your space is bigger than just one of the dimensionals, you can use the outside. So I placed two strips on the back of my sentiment and got that adhered down onto my card base. Once I had that in place, I went ahead and cut off the excess from this as well. If you've been around my channel long, you know that my motto is a card isn't finished until there is some bling. So the final thing I did for this card was added some sequins to the front. I ended up adding five and they kind of trail from the upper left to the bottom right. I did put two on the sentiment tag to kind of fill that extra open space. And here are some close-ups of the final card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this alternative card today using the June 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.